So um, one of the super notable experiences for me at SpaceX that was super impactful was getting to go to Cape Canaveral and actually go to uh, Launch Pad 39A, which is the one where all the crewed missions, all the NASA missions, and now all the SpaceX missions, they've all gone from the same launch pad. Um, and there's a crew access arm that the astronauts walk across. And they've been doing this ever since the Apollo mission. They've been doing it for, um, they've been doing it for decades. And there's this wall where the astronauts, right before they ingress, they sign their name on the outside. And so there's this wall of all these signatures of astronauts that have gone to space. And for me personally, one of my, probably my biggest dream in life is uh, to go into space. So for me to actually get to not only go to the, not only to get to the, the base, but also to get to go up the tower, walk across the crew access arm and like see this wall and this, this doorway where the, the astronauts went into the, um, it's, it's, it's something that's like not open to the public at all for any type of tour. Um, that was just like, yeah, that, that was probably one of my favorite memories. Yep, Apollo astronauts walked across this crew access arm, and this was how they ingressed into the, back then it was Saturn V. Um, then you have, you had many different generations of rockets, and, and they all went from this, uh, from this launch pad. And so this was sort of full circle for me, because just a couple years prior, I was standing like across the bay, 10 miles away, watching Demo 2 as just like a, a college student, just like a fan, um, with no affiliation to the company. And now a couple years later, I was literally on top of the um, on top of the the launch pad, go, walking across the tower, um, the crew access arm, and yeah, so that was that was like a big full circle moment. The other really cool thing was getting to go to Starbase. Um, in the early days, I think when fewer people were going, it was. Um, um, we actually had a few company private jets that would fly directly from our office in Hawthorne to Starbase. And it was just like super quick, super efficient. We would just like walk over with our backpack and get on this plane. Then it would just, in like two hours, would take us to the southern tip of Texas. And um, the company was always really supportive of people going to Starbase because it was that's kind of where like the next frontier of problems were being solved. And so even if you didn't have a super specific reason to be there, if your product or whatever your team was responsible for was being used there, uh, you were encouraged to go there and, and talk to users and find out how to make it better and find out how to accelerate um, the Starship program. Yeah, I was probably traveling to Starbase at one point about once a month. That was probably the maximum frequency, and that was when I was involved in a project that was that was there at Starbase entirely. Um, yeah, and Starbase is like a totally, totally unique place. It's like the people that live there, they are just, the, the employees, the engineers, they are fully, fully bought into SpaceX. It's like a SpaceX town, and um, it's actually, a really, really cool place to go to. One of my favorite parts about working there was, was getting to travel there. Um, one of the best memories I have of Starbase was getting to watch the first orbital attempt in person of the Starship, Super Heavy. Um, and we were watching from, I remember I was there, we didn't know if it was gonna happen or not because the, the, the launch window was always being moved around and it came down to weather and these other conditions. And we sort of had taken a gamble and we went down there um, thinking that it would happen, and it got scrubbed, uh, which means it got pushed back by a few days. And it was sort of my last day there before I was going to come back. And we drove over to South Padre Island, and it was bright and early. It was like, I don't remember um, how early it was, maybe 8 a.m., 9 a.m. or something. And we went to South Padre Island, and we were watching from... I don't know, probably about the same distance that I watched the Falcon 9 from in Cape Canaveral, except um, um, this rocket is like an entirely different beast. It's, it's, uh, it's like the largest, heaviest launch vehicle um, ever flown. 
and yeah, ended up launching it. And it was, um, I remember it was like maybe 40, 45 seconds or so right after liftoff. It was just like burned, like etched into my memory. Um, this launch was uh, pretty rough, honestly. It was the first one. The rocket did not get very far. It did not get to stage separation. Um, yeah, I, honestly, in my head, I had been thinking about this moment for years at this point. I'd already been there for a couple years. And so in my head, I was thinking this rocket is so big, so ambitious that part of me was thinking that it just wouldn't even get off the launch pad. It was just going to blow up um, and it was just going to be super ugly. And to see, to see the lighting sequence of all the Raptor engines, um, they start in the circular fashion. Um, so they, there's sort of this um, sequence approach of how the engines start up, and it takes place over a couple seconds. So gradually, you see all the engines start, um, and then to see this like massive, like 40-story building essentially just start to lift, lift off. And um, after clearing the tower, there was already like several engines that were out. I, with my own eyes, I saw one of the Raptor engines explode. I saw like pieces of metal flying, and there was like. Uh, it was super, super chaotic, but it was overall, uh, they maintained authority of the vehicle. And um, yeah, it, it, it was like, it, it, and the sound of it was just like, it was just a much deeper, deeper sound than the, the Falcon 9.